On the passenger list of a BEA Trident was a Pathé News camera team. In Parliament, the session of the long nights was over. The Premier and Opposition leader had put London behind them. How do political top men get away from it all? First, we filmed Mr. Edward Heath. In an hour and a half, the Trident was at Nice. Between there and Monte Carlo, the new leader of the opposition has taken a villa. Beautifully situated, the Riviera at its best. The sun, the Mediterranean, the perfection of French food and wine, all calculated to recharge the human batteries for the tasks ahead. Friends of Mr. East, Mr. and Mrs. Seligman and their children, share the villa with him. Mrs. Seligman and the rest of the family are happy to stay ashore. Perfect condition for erasing the memory of the marathon run of all night sittings on the finance bill. Mr. Heath's father watched that minor struggle with a canvas. After an exhilarating sail, the prospect of lunch was alluring. A villa with its own swimming pool. What better? When Riviera memories are behind him, Edward Heath begins the most important phase of his political career. His election to leadership has been a shot in the arm for the Tory party, especially as the government majority is tiny. For him, the future could be dazzling indeed. Much nearer home, no further away than the Scilly Isles, the Prime Minister is spending his holiday, as he has done here for some years. There's a touch of magic about these little islands quite near to Land's End and yet out in the Atlantic. Mr. and Mrs. Harold Wilson had a bungalow built here six years ago. For its name, they chose an old Cornish word, Loenba, House of Rest. Downing Street must seem a thousand miles away from these silly islands where England makes her last gesture to the Atlantic Ocean. At the wheelhouse, the Wilsons stayed before they built a place of their own. And to see Joe Phillips, the owner, the PM always goes when he is down here. On St. Mary's, the main island, it's almost subtropical at this time of the year. Everything comes out a little earlier than on the mainland. The Wilsons were going for a picnic on the day our cameramen were there. And if a Prime Minister ever can shed the cares of state, it is at such times and in such a place. The sea beckons the visitors whenever it's fine. Here, if time doesn't quite stand still, it slows down. If the boat isn't ready, nobody minds. Prime Minister's son, Giles, is with him. In the Sillies, everybody knows everybody else. Regular visitors are accepted as almost natives. Old Verney Thompson's head hasn't been in the least turned now that he is a friend of the Prime Minister. Ordinary holidaymakers will have something to tell all their friends when they go back. The destination was the nearby island, Samson. Five of the islands are inhabited, but nobody lives on Samson, and that makes it an ideal place for a day-long picnic. It was a grand day, no telephones, no worries of any kind. There's good shooting on Samson at certain times of the year. For the rest, it's wild, beautiful, and perfect for all who want sun and quiet. Samson, though soothing worries, invites a contemplative mood. The Prime Minister knows that when he returns to Downing Street, the path will not be easy. Refreshed, he is confident that, whatever the troubles, he will overcome them. <laughs> 